Hey folks, we're back with another episode in our long-running series where we run down a handful of the best-looking video games looking for funding on Kickstarter. After 18 months of relative quiet on the platform, we're starting to see things pick up with plenty new and interesting games taking to the service. Before we check out what's hot this March, now's a great time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and having done so, let's take a look at how the games we covered in February's show did against their campaign's goals. Well, in something of a rarity, all of the games we featured last month made it successfully over the finishing line, with each having achieved their targets. Project Grove, a 3D puzzle platformer, took home just over 30,000 UK pounds to beat its target by just over a grand. The so-called pilgrimage sim, My Work Is Not Yet Done, sailed past its target of 7,500 US dollars, ending with just over 12,000 at its conclusion. Ruby, the Wayward Myra, went way past its goal and brought in just over 43,000 US dollars against a target of 12. The demo is still up to play as this video goes out on March 15th, and there's a link down to it in the video description. Spirit T also made it home with just under 19,500 Canadian dollars against their aims of 18 grand. The same goes for Zelta, the survival shooter horror game, which financially was the most successful of last month's games taking in just under 67,000 US dollars versus its aim of 20k. And lastly, the final game we featured back in February, Aquamarine, well that ended just shy of 19,000 US dollars against its target of just over 12 and a half. So will our picks of the best looking indie games on Kickstarter episode for March be as on the nose as last month's offerings? Well let's jump in and take a look. Up first and already funded past its aim of 10,000 Canadian dollars with 17 or so days to go. Barn Finders comes at us all apparently strongly influenced by a popular reality TV show, although we can't recall having seen this one on the goggle box here in the Netherlands. In any case, Barn Finders is looking to take players to boarded up and abandoned old barns, each of them concealing objects of differing values. Already well into the game's development and with publishers Playway already on board, Barn Finders is slated to ship towards the middle of the year. Now it's certainly an intriguing project. Finding the barns and getting things out of them is only the beginning. Players will also need to salvage the objects and flip them for sale, which may involve a spot of repair work and cleaning, but also having to show off their flat packed furniture assembly skills by making objects from the scrap you'll come across in your travels. Naturally, you'll have access to a shop, which is the heart and soul of your business, and you'll be able to customize the place and give it your overall desired look and feel. With 12 or so locations to search for items, and the game also including blind auctions, an upgrade system and mini games, Barn Finders has until April 2nd before the campaign ends. I'd expect them to have brought in well more than enough to hit the stretch goals, which are currently listed up to 30,000. There's a demo to play today, and you can find the link down in the video description. Looking for 50,000 euros, Jitsu Squad is on the face of things a fast, frantic and super intense action beat em up brawler for up to 4 players. As you can see, it's looking likely to be one heck of a colourful affair where you'll be able to pull off 100 plus chain combos while also collecting power ups, weapon upgrades and other typical dynamics seen in these type of brawlers, all before heading off towards huge and epic boss battles. All of this is inspired by games such as Streets of Rage, Final Fight and from the speed and intensity you see from the likes of Super Smash Bros, Dragon Fighter Z and Guilty Gear. The team are looking to launch Jitsu Squad for PC as well as the Switch and PlayStation platforms, although the shipping date is out towards March 2022. They are also looking to produce physical copies which is a nice touch and often helps bring in the support from collectors. With the campaign ending on April 1st, there's still some way to go before this gets funded, with it so far having brought in close to 12,500 euros. We think this will be touch and go, and of course, we'll cover how this and all of the other games did in this month's countdown versus their funding aims 
in next month's Kickstarter rundown. Outbreak is very new to us, with it featuring something we have zero concept of. Though having spoken to a few people about it, particularly across in the States, this might prove perhaps unexpectedly popular. From what we can tell, there's no story going on here. The game is a multiplayer storm chasing affair that takes place in rounds with players loading into the game at the same time as the simulation then kicks in and various storms roll across the map. The team here have used historical storm data to build the game's weather patterns and with them are also able to use real life storms as and when they happen. The ultimate aim of the game is to deploy your probe ahead of the storms, all the while not crashing your car, getting struck by lightning or pummeled by giant hailstones. You also gain some in-game cash for photos you can take and all while doing so you can upgrade your car to make it better getting around the maps. We understand the game has been in development for quite a few years, with it already having a thriving community behind it, and as we upload the video, Outbreak is fully funded. It's expected to come out around the end of the year for the PC. While we've no grasp on why anybody would want to chase down such monstrosities as these, Outbreak seems a decent recreation of such a pastime, without the obvious side effects. Coming up next, and looking for 12,000 US dollars with a campaign ending Friday, March 20th, Help Will Come Tomorrow is a narrative-driven resource management game deep in the harsh Siberian frosts. Set in the wake of the October Revolution, the basic mechanics are similar to other survival stories. You'll need to meet the character's needs by gathering resources, building a camp whilst also finding food and taking care of the camp's well-being health and safety. However, the team delivering the game are keen to stress they're also looking to create something that really bit different, and the main focus is not on the day-to-day -day survival mechanics, but rather the key focus is more on the narrative aspects of the game. Set to use a relationship system, the character traits and attributes will have a big impact on the course of the game, and the actions and choices the player takes will heavily impact the character's relationships with each other's and their own mental state, which in turn impacts the chance for both of them and survival of the group as a whole. With differing characters from across the social sphere of the time the game is set, players will need to traverse the differing class affiliations and the differing relationships between them. Now it's a super interesting overall construct and has seemingly gone down well with others too, and with four or so days left to go, Help Will Come Tomorrow is fully backed and it's just taken over the initial 12,000 campaign aim. If you fancy taking a look in more detail, you can find a link to do so down in the description. The game we're most excited about that's on Kickstarter for this March episode of the series is Vibrant Venture. It's a single player 2D adventure platforming game which adds a splash and dash of on the fly puzzle solving. The game features four different playable characters, each of which have two unique abilities. While hardly a new concept, by switching between the various characters, you can combine their skills and movements in order to make it through the platforming and puzzle sections, many of which are open-ended with numerous ways in which to complete the various levels, of which the game is said to ship with 22 of them. And there'll also be more bonus stages, as well as five bosses, goofy cutscenes, plenty characters to meet along the way, and seemingly a big dose of charm to boot. Vibrant Venture will also come with a level generator, Players can build their own additional words and with them be able to share them with the wider playing community. The team are also looking to add further additions with more content, characters, levels and additions to the level creator system once it's launched, with the team expecting it to ship towards the end of next year. It's currently between 30-40% to 40 complete, most of it having been funded by the team's personal savings, and it's hoped the funds brought in by this campaign will tide things over until the completion. Thus far, they've already taken in 13,000 or so US dollars, 
against a target of around 10k. And here's the thing, as this video goes out there's 18 or so days still left to go in the campaign. Stretch goals are at 20k and 25k which will add additional bosses and even more content. Vibrant Ventures campaign ends on April 2nd and we'd expect it to be probably the most financially successful of all of the games in this month's rundown. And there we go. That's just about all we have time for in our March episode of our Kickstarter review series. If there's anything here you like the look of, please let us know down in the comments and whilst you're here, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already, with every click helping push the channel onwards and upwards. As always, many thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you all again here soon for more indie game videos.